Okay, so I had a question about um, uh, galactic motion. When calculating if the star is moving away from us, we predict using the Doppler effect. However, how does this apply to binary stars as they themselves orbit around barycenters and not in a straight line? In this case, wouldn't the wavelength vary, making the predictions unreliable? Right. I think we've got two, one phenomena, but two different applications that you can't really be confused. Uh, yes, we can use the Doppler effect to look at stellar motion. Um, we don't spend a lot of time doing that for just ordinary stars, though, because well, we don't care that much, I guess. Um, I mean, the, the motion of stars around us in the galaxy is of some interest, I suppose, but basically most of the stars are doing the same as we are, which is orbiting around the galactic centre. However, we do care about redshifting and sometimes blue shifting when it comes to galaxies. Um, and even there we're talking about sort of different scales of motion. So nearby galaxies, by which I mean members of our local group of galaxies and maybe um, the closest supercluster, the Virgo supercluster, when we look at the redshift or blue shift of those gal galaxies, what we are seeing is their kind of actual motion. So, for example, the Andromeda, which is uh, possibly the largest galaxy in our local group, is moving towards us and we are moving towards it. We're, we're coming together and we can see that. So the light from those, that galaxy is a bit blue shifted. But notice that's the light from the galaxy. Yes, that light is coming from stars, but it's like the aggregate light from all of the stars. And the actual motions of stars within the Andromeda galaxy are, are very small compared to that motion. Um, galactic redshifting, cosmological redshifting, which is what you can see in this slide, is on a much, 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 much bigger scale. So we're talking about far more distant galaxies. So that's a whole different different scale effect that sees, as you see in the sort of bottom one, this galaxy cluster here, number five, whatever it is. This is really significant redshifting. We're talking over, over very large wavelengths. Um, the other thing that the, the question asked was about um, the other thing the question asked was about uh, binary stars. Yes, and that's the example that we're looking at here. Um, don't forget that the motion of the binary star in terms of redshift and blue shift is superimposed on the motion of the whole system. So the star system here might be moving away from the Earth, or it might be moving towards the Earth, or it might be moving sort of sideways. And so if you were comparing the location of the spectral lines compared to the spectral lines in the laboratory, you'd be able to see that. What this additional motion does, if the alignment of the stars is such, if it works, so if, if we were looking at this and they were rotating, it's like we we're looking into the pole of their orbit, then we wouldn't see anything because they're not coming towards us or moving away from us as a result of their co-rotation, their, their um, orbiting around the barycenter. Um, but where the geometry does work, we do see this superimposed effect. But what we actually see, and it's what's uh, the uh, the diagram on the right is trying to show is that we see the spectral lines splitting and then coming together, then splitting and then coming together, then splitting and then coming together over the period of the orbit. Um, those spectral lines themselves might be, say, blue shifted or red shifted, depending on depending on the motion of the star. So these are two effects which superimpose on top of the other, or like free effects, because you have the motion of the star within the galaxy, you have the potential Doppler um, binary galaxy, then you have a motion of a galaxy itself. And yeah, this could be a bit tricky interpreting in the data, but often that's not the case because we know kind of what we're looking at. You only, with a binary system, you you, you see the splitting. You wouldn't see the splitting if it wasn't a, a binary system uh, orbiting in a certain way. The galactic redshift, you, you know, because you're looking at a galaxy, you're not looking at the, the light from an individual star. So there's... there's all using the Doppler shift for electromagnetic radiation, but kind of using it in different ways. Hope that helps.